Good evening. Welcome to the West Covina City Council Chambers for the uh, Planning Commission meeting of September 25th, 2012. Uh, we'll start off with our Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Menifee. And please remain standing for a moment of silent prayer. All those who can stand, please, and address the flag and say with me, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. May we have a roll call, please? I just wanted to mention that uh, you, you may notice we have an empty seat tonight. Uh, Commissioner Vias did uh, decide to resign from the commission. He resigned on Monday, so he's no longer commissioner as of that date. Um, we are going to be going through the process. The city will be going through the process of uh, working towards getting an, another appointment, which will happen over the next couple of months. So with that, uh, Commissioner Holtz. Here. Commissioner Woods. Here. Commissioner Menifee. Here. Chairman Stewart. Here. Do we have any changes to the uh, minutes of the uh, regular meeting of August 28th? Commissioner Holtz. Yeah, I would just like to go on record, even though I approved the uh, LA Fitness, uh, that I did object to the size of the sign that was going to go up. I just would like to make that note in the, in the notes and the minutes. Any other corrections? All right, so we'll go ahead and approve them as amended. We should have a vote on that if there's a change. I'll oh. second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Four, four zero. All right, we move on to oral communications. This is a time when any member of the public may speak to the commission on any matter within the scope of duties assigned to the commission. Other matters included on this agenda may be addressed when that item is under consideration. For all oral communications, the chairperson may impose reasonable limitations on public comments to assure an orally and timely meeting. The Ralph M. Brown Act limits the Planning Commission and staff's ability to respond to public comments at this meeting. Thus, your comments may be agendized for a future meeting or referred to staff. The Commission may ask questions for clarifications if desired at this time. By policy of the Commission, oral communications at this time on the agenda is limited to a total of 15 minutes. Persons who are not afforded the opportunity to speak at this time may do so under item E later on the agenda. I do not have any cards for oral communications. Does anybody wish to speak on something that's not on the agenda? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to the consent calendar. Do you have a report, please? Staff report? Yes, there's only one item on the consent calendar tonight, and that is the forthcoming. And we do have a, a bit of a change to that. We've been working with an applicant um, at the Westfield Mall who was able to submit the day we were preparing this. And so we are preparing to have an agenda on October 9th with two items. One is a conditional use permit for a beauty school at Westfield Plaza, which is actually already existing. They're just going to be relocating. And then also the off-site wall sign that is now shown on the October 23rd meeting. So just so you're prepared, you, you don't get a night off on October 9th. That concludes my report. Any comments on the consent calendar? If not, the motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Commissioner Holtz, seconded by Commissioner Menifee. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Pass for zero. All right, we'll move on to uh, item number three, which is a public hearing. Appeal of administrative use permit number 12-13. Category exemption, applicant is Roy Young, R Roy Ong, location is 1708 East Cortez Street. The request is a repeal of a, appeal of a, commission, a decision to deny the applicant's request for an 11 foot wide by 7 foot deep secondary driveway approached on Dagama Street, a private street. The secondary approach is proposed to allow a recreational vehicle tra trailer to park in the rear yard of the subject property. The recreational trailer will be screened by an existing wall and retractable gate that are approximately six foot in height. Here we have a staff report, please. Yes. This is a 
the proposal to construct a secondary driveway as, as just described, which would allow access to the rear yard for a recreational vehicle or trailer. The subject property is located in the El Dorado Condominium Association. That condominium association does have CCNRs and all the condominium, condominium owners own the streets in common there. The subject property is on the corner of Cortez and De Gamma. The rear yard in that property is approximately 22 feet in, in depth. The El Dorado community was developed with a specific plan, which is known as specific plan number two. And this proposal is for a secondary driveway. The El Dorado specific plan does address parking when it, when it was developed some time back, a couple decades back. It states each dwelling unit will have a two-car garage and a and driveway that will accommodate two cars. So each, each property there was developed with two car, a two-car garage and two cars parking in the driveway at a minimum. The subject property is 6,600 square feet, and, the, and it's a little bit larger than the adjacent lots, which roughly are range between 4,000 and 5,000 square feet. The El Dorado Homeowners Association, or HOA, owns the street network that provides access to the property. The applicant is required to obtain approval from the HOA prior to making any improvements on the street. The planning director, the planning department, is responsible to approve the addition of driveways on private property. So that's how we're involved. Um, but, we, but there still is a division of authority there that even if, even if the, the city were to approve it, they, the applicant would still have to obtain approval from the HOA to do the curb cut on the street. To date, the HOA has not approved a curb cut on DeGamma Street to allow for the secondary driveway. The neighboring properties have private rear yards that are approximately 18 feet in width and separated by six foot walls. So they're very small kind of patio homes with, with a small uh, private rear yard. Concern here is that uh, allowing a a RV or some kind of other recreational equipment to be parked there would have a negative impact on the quality of life of those neighboring residents, specifically on their privacy and on visual intrusion into their, in their backyard. With that in mind, on August 16, 2012, staff reviewed the applicant's proposal for a secondary driveway and determined to deny the application. Uh, we were providing uh, four reasons why that was denied. Number one, that the HOA hasn't approved the secondary driveway as of yet. Number two, that the proposal would have, negative, would have a negative effect on the privacy and quality of life of the neighboring properties. Number three, that we did receive five letters in opposition to the, the proposal, and those are also attached in your staff report as attachment number three, I believe. Yes, attachment number three. And then four, that the El Dorado specific plan had a concept that each lot here would have a total of four parking spaces, two in the garage and two in the driveway, and, there, and no other, um, no other uh, driveways or curb cuts were conceptualized. On August 22, 2012, the applicant appealed the planning director's decision. The applicant had the following reasoning. Number one, based on a mediation between uh, Judge Cardenas and the Board of El Dorado Homeowner Association, um, the neighboring residents confirmed the applicant's request for a secondary driveway, and that copy, there is a copy of that uh, mediation as part of attachment three. Uh, two, that the city of West Covina has allowed a secondary driveway at 1641 Cameron Street, basically that, that the, the city has allowed it in other circumstances. And then three, that allowing the parking of a recreational vehicle in the rear yard will increase the quality of life for residents and visitors as a recreational vehicle will not be able to to be seen uh, from the street readily. In conclusion, the proposed secondary driveway access would allow for vehicles to be parked in the rear yard of the subject property, which I think was, in, in, in my reading of the specific plan, was uh, the, the vision there was that that would be for private use of the, the homers um, and in surrounding situations, so that, that parking something like a, a recreational vehicle in the rear yard would ha have a negative impact on the quality of life on the neighboring residence lots. Again, just to, to emphasize that the HOA is responsible to review any changes to the Gamma Street because it is a private street owned by the HOA. They have not approved the secondary driveway. And just to make a comment on the um, number one of the applicant's um, reasoning, which was the, um, the mediation between uh, Judge Cardenas and the El Dorado Board, that there is a attachment that's part of attachment three that um, 
that seems to be discussing the existing driveway and, and, and a changes, modification to the existing driveway. I don't, in that, my reading of that, I don't see anything that talks about a secondary driveway being added as part of that mediation. So those are the reasons that um, they were, we still, the staff still has the same opinion when we denied it the first time. And then we're recommending to the Planning Commission uphold the Planning Director's decision and deny administrative use from it uh, number 1213. That concludes staff's presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any uh, commission questions or staff at this time? All right, seeing none, we'll go ahead and go to public testimony. Would the uh, applicant like to step forward? Uh, the chairman, I, if you want to discuss the, the time. Yes, we, uh, we do have a, a three minute uh, time limit on the, or five minute time limit on the discussion, sir.
I give to Jack Anderson. After checking them, among the five, one is Eugene Kim. Eugene Kim is a manager of Prefer Management Group who handle the management of the Eldorado, who does not reside in our community. Number two, second, is Nancy Tang. Nancy Tang. The wife of Chris, my friend, my next door neighbor. When I handed down the consent paper, his hand is full. So with his consent, I wrote down the name and address for his sake. Please confirm with Chris, my neighbor. That is not a forgery because I have the consent from him. So, now the rest is three, Raymond Tang, Robert Siegel, Dixie King, which all of them are the members of the board of El Dorado. Okay, <clears throat> wrap, wrap it up, please. Go ahead and finish a little bit, wrap it up real quick, because we got a five minute one, you know, five minute time. Okay, yeah, almost, almost done. Okay, thank you. Mm. Uh, they are members of El Dorado. I cannot understand and bewilder why they object for my second driveway. It looked like a show of dra dra drama. A dog is eating up, eating its own vomit. But we are men that honor our own work. Let alone sign consent with a judge in the mediation that granted Roy Hong a modification of existing driveway, signed by Raymond Tang as the representative of El Dorado. So they are void, and it doesn't apply. Because I, I received this one. Okay. For conclusion. Pardon? Sorry. Conclusion. Well, we got five minute time. You're, you're six and a half minutes right now. So, yeah. Nothing to hinder the second driveway for me, Roy Ong. So, without prejudice, I beg your honor, please grant my new second driveway. Thank you for your honor, kindness, and understanding, Roy Ong. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wait just a second. Any questions uh, from commission for Mr. Ong? Yeah. Commissioner Holtz. You said you have a letter there that was from the HOA. You have a letter that from the HOA said they approved it? Yes. Do we have a copy of that? Yes, you do. That they approved? Sure. Roy, Roy, you're talking about this one, right? Yeah. That's, it's it's uh, attachment three. No, I'm not talking about the judge decision. I'm talking about... Well, that's what he's referring to is the judge's decision. But did the home, did the HOA approve the extra driveway? I thought he said in his letter. It's signed, it's signed by Raymond Tang. There's a, uh, I'm sorry, maybe let him answer his, let him answer and then I can respond okay. to what, go ahead. Uh, this is a paper. No, I don't want to, I don't want to see it. You have to talk in the microphone. Oh, yeah. uh, Raymond Tang, as a representative of El Dorado during the time, we have settlement agreement before the judge, and he signed already at the name of El Dorado. That's why I was shocked, you know. If you sign already, yeah, yeah. Why you upset? I don't understand. I cannot understand. And when I okay, that's fine. Okay, but uh, if we look at that document, what I what it looks to me like is that it went to mediation. And then there were some decisions made, which I think that's the source of the disagreement. If you look at nine, nine and ten, and I know ten's a little hard to read, but nine, I'll just read it because it's easier. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Roy Ong will apply to the city of West Covina for city permits and approvals needed for modifications of existing driveway and access to the residence at 1708 Cortez, West Covina. So that, that to me says existing driveway. The existing driveway is in the front of the house. It doesn't say secondary driveway. This is my response. So 
Um, and then the next number 10 says, if the city issues permits and approvals, Mr. Ong shall apply to the ARC, which is the HOA, the Architecture Review Committee of the Homer Association, for approval to build or modify the driveway. So what, what, I, what I understand was going on is there was some kind of modification to his primary driveway, that that's what it seems like it's talking about to me. Now, in my, in, in, in what happened was that if you look on the next page, you'll see under the El Dorado's Homer Association signature, the gentleman named uh, Raymond Tang, yes, Raymond Tang, who is here in the audience tonight, signed that as a representative of the Homer Association. But again, Mr. Tang may have a different uh, um, interpretation of what happened than Mr. Ong. Well, but, but just applying for the application doesn't mean it was approved. Correct. That's so correct. the HOA did not approve it. They just were applied to. They were right? applied to, and th this judgment says that they need to, that Mr. Ong needs to apply to the city. But right. that doesn't presuppose what the city's decision is going to be. Well, the, don't both have to apply? Don't they have well, they to apply have to, to the approved. city and get approval and apply to HOA and get approval? Correct. That's okay. Correct. So the HOA has not given approval yet. I think you're probably right. I, it might, uh, Mr. Tang might have a different. I, I'm not sure I un fully understand the mediation. Well, to, and the other to, the other thing is uh, on the last letter, uh, Eugene Kim, who he referred to, says that he is the property manager. Whether he lives there or not is is indifferent. If he is the official property manager, and he said that it has not been approved. Yes. Okay. Right. All right. Okay. Well, I have the mediation. That means the judge granted me second driveway. It doesn't say that. It says, uh, okay. It says here. This mediation all related to cost to pay. And then he said, Roy Ock will apply to the city of West Lina. Right. For city permit. Right. That doesn't mean that it was approved. You just applied. You have to apply, then it has to be approved. This says you need to apply, which you did, but it hasn't been approved. Right? My understanding, this paper is, is signed by Raymond Tang, that means with this paper, that's why I go to City of Wisconsin to ask a permit. Because but it's just, you just, already you paper. just applied, which just says you need to apply, which you did, but the city has not approved it. But after I got the permit, and then he said, if the city issue permit after an approval, then Mr. Ong shall apply. To the HOA, HOA, which they haven't approved. So after after the city permit issue the permit, but then now I'm waiting for city grant me the permit, yeah. and then I will apply for SOA. Well, when that happens, then yeah, I think you need to come back. That's why I'm waiting for city to give me the permit, and then I will apply for the for the SOA. Right. The way it stands right now, there's no approval on either part, city or HOA. That's where we're standing right now. That's why you're here. So uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. We've got more people to talk about it, so we'll, we'll see how it goes through the rest of the meeting here. One question for you. How, how big is your motorhome? How big is your motorhome? Your motorhome, how big is it? Your motorhome. Yeah, how big is it? No, no, I, I haven't bought yet. I haven't oh, you haven't bought one? No, 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 no. Oh, okay, that's fine. All the regulation, because I want to hide in my in my garage inside. Yeah. Because okay. I'm my next door open, exposed. I don't want to expose. I want to hide it. All right, Mr. Any more questions for Mr. Young at this time? Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else wish to speak in favor? All right, hearing none, I do have some cards against here. So I'll just, I'll just have them call them in order here, whoever might come up first. Uh, the first name is Eugene Kim.
Excuse me one second, Eugene. Can you make sure his mic's on? Should be. Try it again. No. is Eugene Kim and I am the property manager for Preferred Management Group and we are the property managers for the El Dorado Homeowners Association that governs the subject property. As you guys already know, homeowners associations are something that's encumbered uh, and it's recorded on the property and in this particular case uh, Mr. Ong purchased the property knowing that it is that this property is encumbered by the homeowners associations, the CCNRs, and that he's required to comply with the rules of the CCNRs. And so we're here because he's trying to seek approval for something that the board disagrees with. And it's not just the board, this is the association overall. Because I'm speaking not only as a representative of the board, but also for other homeowners. There are numerous other homeowners that called into our office for whatever reason, they wanted their, their, their statements to be confidential, but they disclosed information to us. And they disclosed information that is relevant and pertinent to this case. Now, it's important to understand what we're dealing with here. This isn't just a, 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 an extension of an existing driveway so that you can kind of park an RV. He's trying, he has his driveway. He wants to have a, a driveway on the side of his house all the way in the backyard. I mean, this is something that is completely inconsistent with the CCNRs. And the whole purpose of CCNRs is to have uniformity, is to have consistency. And that's why people buy into associations. And as much of a hindrance as it is to pay into it, this is what you get out of it. You get consistency. You get a board to review things, to make sure things are done accordingly. And in this particular case, the association has denied Mr. Ong's request for several reasons. Well, first, he has never even submitted a request. Okay? It's, we heard about this, and we intentionally wanted to inform the Planning Commission that we disapprove. And we disapprove for very fundamental reasons. One, it's inconsistent with the site plans. Only two cars and two driveways. Two, for aesthetic reasons. And three, probably more importantly, what he wants to do, he's going to have to demolish existing association property. There is a wall, a brick wall that's, I don't know, 12, 14 feet high that he's going to have to demolish that belongs to the association. Then he's going to have to take sidewalk that belongs to the association, grind it down, put in a whole new uh, driveway and an apron so that he can get access to it. Meanwhile, none of this even belongs to Mr. Ong. This is all association property. And so that's the fundamental reason why we, we disapprove. Now, there's been discussions of, of, of this mediation, okay? And one of the misleading statements, because um, we were involved and we were at that mediation, one of the misleading statements that were stated was, uh, it was it was some kind of opinion of a judge or an order of the court. It's not. Okay, this is a, a settlement. This is a resolution. Uh, 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 and the reason why there is a settlement, just so you guys know, is because Mr. Ong has consistently flouted the association and has done things inconsistent with the association, and the association has had to file numerous lawsuits in order to enforce the CCNRs. And that's why we're here, to do everything we can to protect association property. So, as we discussed, and as the uh, Planning Commission has already heard, the settlement agreement only states that we agreed to review modifications to the existing driveway. Now, there are several points that, 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 that are very apparent. One, it's existing driveway. This is a secondary driveway, and that's already been pointed out. Two, it is conditional, okay? It's conditional on the Planning Commission's approval, 
and on the association's approval. He is still required under paragraph 10 to submit those plans to the association and the association has the authority to deny it. We did not give a, a, a blank check, so to speak, to let him do whatever he, he wants by way of this settlement agreement. It's totally inconsistent with that. The other thing that he mentioned is he said that he got uh, consents from other homeowners and he has some kind of uh, um, petition of some sort. Now I can tell you we've received calls, the management company has received calls saying that he has forged their signature, that he came and knocked on the door and said that he was going to do what he was going to do and he wanted them to sign and after, he said, after the homeowner said no I don't want to sign that, he Five just minutes. signed it for them. So with that being said, um, that those are the reasons why we oppose it, uh, and it's very clear, I believe, in, in, in the staff report as well. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Uh, next up is uh, Lloyd Johnson. Good evening, Planning Commissioners. I, what I've heard tonight is from somebody is, I don't know, like a space cadet somewhere out there. You know, uh, this reminds me a few years back probably about 15 years back, my neighbor across the street went to the uh, planning up there and evidently they got a fence that was put up. It was legal for them to put it up because it was on the side yard. And I call it a spike fence. It's a six foot Tupperware fence on the side of this yard that faces my house and we didn't know anything about it. And it's up there. But you know, as I'm listening to this right here, and first of all, there's a lady sitting right back here in the back. Her husband is one of the signatures that this gentleman forged. Her husband did not sign that petition. So, you know, this planning commission, no matter what this gentleman says, no matter even what a judge says, this is the city of West Covina. The first step is coming through our planning commission. You guys have, I don't care if a judge says he's allowed to put it there, it's up to our city. That judge does not own the city of West Covina. The first step on anything that comes through is the planning commission. This is where it starts from. And you guys have the right to deny it or approve it. And so I don't know where he's coming from. So what I am hoping and what I've listened to, I actually went out and saw the property. You know, because I was interested because like I say, when it happened to me, this fence was put up. I'm, anything that happens to other neighbors that I think is on affected property, I want to take a look at. This would be an ugly sight over there on these other pieces of property. It would infringe on their rights as homeowners, as beautification. It's a beautiful neighborhood they have there. And I think it would be an outrageous, uh, thing to let this happen. So I'm hoping that this planning commission denies his appeal and let it go from there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Uh, Dixie King. Yes, my name is uh, Dixie King and um, I am uh, one of the board members. I moved into my home in 1992, so I've been there 20 years. And uh, I like living in a gated community. I, I really like the way that it, it maintains the integrity of the neighborhood. Uh, it's a safe place to live. And uh, at the time I moved in, I knew there were CCNRs. And I was willing to accept whatever those restrictions are. And I feel that our, the restrictions that we have with our CCNRs aren't near as restrictive as some associations can be. But uh, the whole idea is, though, that um, uh, you know, we have rules to uh, conform by, and I like that. It maintains the integrity of the uh, the community, and it makes it look really nice. Uh, if Mr. Ong is allowed to do something like this, it's very unsightly, number one. It does go against the CCNRs. It also sets a precedent uh, for other um, neighbors, that residents that might also want to put a secondary driveway into their property. And so we totally object, and the fact is he did not present any type of an application uh, to us to even look over or any details as to, you know, the dimensions of this sort of thing. And um, so basically that's, I just want to express you know, my opposition to it. Thank you. Ms. King. <clears throat> Robert Siegel. Yes, Commissioners, my name is Robert Siegel. I live in the gated community of El Dorado Homeowners Association. I am also a board member of that association. I am here to object by opposition to this uh, request to build this secondary driveway. Um, I just have, I'd like to just quote a short, uh, short uh, couple sentences from our CCNRs. It's page 29, 6.2, committee approval. Before commencing any building, 
remodeling, or renovation operations or activities, written approval must be obtained from the committee covering building and plot plans for all structures erected, altered, renovated, remodeled, placed, assembled, or permitted to remain on any residential lot, including garages and fences. And it goes on, but that's, that's the crux of the matter. And as far as his residence, 1708, he wants to build the secondary driveway, which is located in the back backyard. As uh, Mr. Kim said, that is a cinder block wall that would have to be torn down. And opposite from that wall is a pool area, a park area, and a park and a, a, a parking area. It also faces a resident, 610 uh, Degama Lane. Uh, I voiced my opposition to this request, and uh, uh, I hope you uh, you agree with my request. Thank you, Ray Siegel. Uh, Raymond Tang. Good evening. I'm Raymond Tang. I live in the association. I'm also a board member of the association. Um, I just have a really short one to clear, to clear up. Okay. Uh, about this litigation uh, by the judge, this was referred to other unsightly stuff that he had done to his exterior of his property. And this settlement was agreed on that he had, had to remove all of those items. And in addition to, he asked to have his existing driveway to be modified. At the time, I said, that's fine. You could do any modification to your driveway as you wish. However, you have to get the approval from the city because, and, and the association as to what, you, what you're gonna be uh, modifying or, or changing. So that was to the extent of this little litigation, um, just so that I could clear up uh, if you have any questions about it. Um, just Hulse? out of curiosity, did he do those other things he was instructed to do? Yes, he did okay. remove it. Thank you. Good, thank you, Mr. Chang. Uh, Herb Reynolds. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity. I'm up here to urge you to uphold the planning director's decision on this item. Uh, you know, quite frankly, sitting back here listening to the applicants, uh, I'm offended by his whole approach. I mean, he's, he's talking as if he had a judge approve what he wants to do. And it's plain and simple if you read what is in the report, this judge simply offered uh, advice to him that you have to go to the city and go through the process to get the approvals. Uh, he is presenting it as such that he's gotten the approvals that a judge is saying you've got to do it and that's just the way it is. This gentleman, when he purchased his property, obviously signed off and was given a copy of the CCNRs, which everyone in an association like that has to live by and abide by. And apparently he has somehow come to the conclusion that he doesn't have to. And you know, that's just not the way it is. And when he cites another location in the city, the one on Cameron that was permitted apparently to build a secondary driveway, that's wonderful. It doesn't mean that everyone who applies is going to be approved. That's not the way it works. You know, we, when I was sitting on this commission, every item brought forward was considered individually on its own merits. One has nothing to do with another. And that's the way it is here, too. So to, to bring up another location in the city is irrelevant. And just on the merits, the explanation given by the planning director and the opposition of the neighbors, including the board members and the association, is enough. You have to, you know, we used to we chastise people in neighborhoods for not coming out and being heard when an item uh, is happening in their neighborhood. Well, these people have, have shown up in force to let you know this is their neighborhood and they don't want this particular individual to circumvent the rules and, and get away with stuff. They want their neighborhood maintained in the manner to which they agreed to when they bought their home and when they signed on to those CCNRs. And I urge you to support them by upholding the planning director's decision. Thank you. Thank you. We might add any, 
uh, modification to the existing driveway is not before us tonight, so it has nothing to do with this uh, concern. We're only concerned about the driveway, the new driveway in the back of the property. So, uh, Mr. Ong, would you like to rebut any of this stuff? Would you like to answer some of these questions? I'll give you, I'll give you a chance. You want to answer? You want to uh, answer any of the critics that uh, you know? The, you know that's told you not not so. That's uh, I don't hear it by problem. Okay. You want to respond? You want to respond to any of the questions that were asked? Uh, because there's a big variance in what you say and what they say. So you want you want to respond to any of those? Yeah, let, me, let me say something. Uh, I went to city because I got the paper from the judge. Uh, that's the reason I went city. Because judge has granted me second driveway. That's why the judge ordered me to go to City Hall and to get a permit. That's the main reason. And I know that the board at that time during sign or agree. They signed already represented uh, Raymond Tang. So I believe I have the right to receive the second driveway. Yeah. Because uh, the one who object is the board or the member. It's not the resident of the uh, the, 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 the board as you represented by uh, Ramtang. Please let me second driveway. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else that didn't turn the card in wish to speak either for or against before I go on? Okay, seeing none, we'll go ahead and close the public testimony and uh, go to uh, commission discussion. Uh, Commissioner Holtz. Yeah, uh, very clearly what I read here from the judge's uh, direction is only saying you need to apply to the city. And the second part is whether we issued the permit or not, the homeowners have to approve it. They don't, the judge doesn't say that they have to approve it. They need to review it and decide whether they want to approve it or not. The judge didn't tell them that they had to approve it. The judge didn't tell the city that we had to approve the permit. In addition, you've got several people here that are really against this whole project. I haven't heard anybody say they're for the project other than yourself. And also, Mr. Eugene Kim, as far as I'm concerned, I stated it before, he is the property manager. He does not have to live on the property to be in charge of that property. So all these things considered, and with all the negatives, I will not approve this. Thank you. Commissioner Menefee, you have words Well, there? yes, thank you. I, I would just say more simplistically to me that setting the aside an interpretation or misinterpretation of what some judge says about mediating two different parties, uh, we have a different structure for our city to operate under. We're more concerned with the property around you and how you conform or not conform with the property around you. And so our judgments are based on that kind of, or my judgment is based on that kind of thing. I appreciate what our staff has done in trying to work through this issue and in trying to clarify this issue for us, uh, but I, I could not support your request. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Woods? I was at the... Uh, it's your mic off. I spent some time today at the, at the subject property, and uh, I, I would have to uh, concur with the uh, staff and the planning director that... Uh, and deny the uh, administrative use per permit for this particular thing. I, I can, I drove on the, I've got a, my notes here. I drove on the side of the Digamo Road and, and it's really nice, beautiful vineries, about eight feet high. And if you put a trailer, yeah, Behind those, it would affect three houses 
You never know what size it's going to be. So I, I have to uh, uh, concur again with the um, staff and uh, deny the permit. Thank you. <clears throat> Well, I agree with my fellow commissioners. Uh, uh, I might just add 1641 Cameron Avenue. It, it's true it has two driveways, but it's almost like a circle driveway. It's a huge lot. Uh, it's not the square footage of this lot. And it's completely different circumstances across the high school. I can see why he wanted the fence around it, to tell you the truth. But, uh, you know, if you okay something like this in a, in a condominium project, you just set, if you set a precedent, who knows what's coming next. You just can't go away from the CCNRs. I know there was a time, one time, uh, across the way at uh, Aspen Village, they, all they did was put a, a window in the entry hall, and they practically started the Civil War over it because nobody else had one. But anyway, uh, I'm definitely against it, and I know what the process has been here. By chance, if the city okays it, then they go back to the HOA, but I can't see the HOA ever okaying it, uh, so I'm in a position to deny, deny it tonight and then ask for the resolution. The resolution number is 12-5479. Uh, motion, please. No, let, we have a, a roll call. Huh? We need a motion, a second, then we'll do the roll call. Okay. Sure. A motion. I'd like a motion. Uh, motion, Commissioner Holtz. I second it. Second, Commissioner Woods. Roll call, please. Commissioner Holtz. Aye. Commissioner Woods. Aye. Commissioner Minifee. Aye. Chairman Stewart. Aye. So just, just to explain what, what, what happened there, because it may have sounded a little bit like it was approved. Uh, the, the resolution was to deny, to uphold the, the planning director's decision and deny the application. That's what the planning commission just voted on a four to, four to, to zero vote. This uh, can be appealed within 10 days to the city council if, if, if you would so desire. But that's the planning commission's decision. Right, thank you. Thank you everyone for coming. All right, we'll move on to non-hearing items. Uh, review of the parking lot design and lighting standards, revision number nine. Uh, may I have a staff report, please? Yes. The city has parking lot design and lighting standards, and they're adopted by the Planning Commission as required by the City of West Covina Municipal Code. These design standards are for the development of private parking facilities. They were last updated in 2011, last year, actually, when we removed some of the handicapped access standards that were actually in conflict with current handicapped access standards in the, in the building code. The standards include information to applicants on requirements for designing a parking lot. We've had some discussions at staff level over the past couple of months regarding the concept of establishing speed hump standards for private parking lots. Speed humps or speed bumps, they're, two, they're actually two different things and the, the last attachment here under attachment two is a black and white photo of each one. A speed hump is kind of a gradual rise where a speed bump is what, what you're mostly familiar with. It jars you, wakes you up and knocks fillings out of your teeth when you drive over. <laughs> um, basically both of these types of uh, uh, traffic calming devices are discouraged on public streets. There are a few in the city of West Covina. They have to go through the traffic committee to get them approved, but they're very much discouraged. Uh, for the main reason is that they're, they're, they impede emergency response vehicles from, from getting to a place at a, at a high rate of speed, which is a lot of times that's their intent. Um, also speed bumps that have a steep angle or are too tall can slow, well, they can slow the response time of emergency vehicles. They can always also damage cars with low profile sports cars. Um, and they can be hazardous to bicyclists and motorcyclists who don't see them to the last minute. So for that reason, um, the city's, th that's been the discussion that staff has had. In the past, we've kind of just allowed, the city's kind of not really taken a stand on them, just basically allowed people wanted to put in speed humps in private parking lots. They just did it, uh, whatever they wanted to. So staff is now proposing to add speed humps in the parking lot design standards, which would allow for a maximum of three inches in height and a minimum of three, inches, three feet in width and require pavement markings on top of them so that uh, you can see them from a distance. And that, that's very much like the, the speed hump that you see in attachment two. It's pretty much what, what we'd be uh, kind of uh, directing people to do. 
Staff has reviewed these proposed changes, including staff from Planning Department, Public Works Department, and the Fire Department. And based on that, staff is recommending a approval. Uh, it, this isn't a resolution. It's not uh, shown that very clearly in, in the agenda, but this would require the adoption of a, of a resolution, just like we did the last one, vote, a motion and a vote. So that includes my staff report. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Do you want to keep the uh, parking lot and the lighting separate then? That's the idea. The, the speed bumps and the lighting part of it separate? Well, uh, well let, me, let, let me kind of explain that a little bit. If you go to attachment one, attachment one is the resolution, and then there's an exhibit A, which is two pages after that. Okay. Exhibit A is the actual parking lot standards and the proposed revisions. Okay. If you go to page three on that, which at the top says section two circulation slash driveways, yeah. the last row there it is the addition that we're proposing to add, which says speed humps and then gives the particulars that I just went over. That's the only change. Everything else would stay exactly like it is in the document. Uh -huh. And what, how the document works is that, I guess, Section 5 is lighting. Most, most of it is parking lot, but Section 5 is lighting. All right. Any commission comments on that? What's, what's the... Uh, the last sentence in description says the updated deleted sections, including outdated handicapped access standards, what did you change there, or didn't you change well, that, anything? That's what we did last year. Okay. I was just sort of reminding. That okay, so what that we did was last changed year. last year, Correct. and now you're okay. I get it. All right. Any other comments? Okay. I like the idea that other speed humps because uh, El Dorado is a good example of speed bumps. And you drive around there one time, you can't wait to get out of there. Uh, <laughs> you mean you mean Aston Village, don't you? No, El Dorado. El Dorado too. Okay. Yeah. Aspen Village is even worse. He's shattered. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm in support of the speed hump, so we need a resolution to go ahead with that. Yeah, the, the resolution number would be 12-5480. I right. move approval of that resolution. Okay. Motion to approve by Commissioner Menifee. I'll second it. Commissioner Stewart. Roll call, please. Commissioner Holtz. Aye. Commissioner Woods. Aye. Commissioner Menifee. Aye. Chairman Stewart. Aye. Carries 4-0. Now we'll go on to lighting standards. Oh, do you want to do? Oh, no, the lighting standards is part. We're not changing the lighting standards. No. Oh, we aren't. Yeah. One. Okay. So we're, done, we're done with number four. All right. Okay, we'll go to five then, which is the study session, initiate a code amendment, beekeeping, and single-family zones. Staff report, please. Planning Department did receive a letter from a, a resident named Brian Jobst requesting consideration of allowing non-commercial beekeeping in single-family zones in the city of West Covina. Currently, beekeeping is not allowed in either single-family zone or residential agricultural zones in the city. Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> oh, you want to speak on it? What a surprise. <laughs> beekeeping has historically been an agricultural enterprise. Over the past several years, there has been publicity about colony collapse disorder that has caused many bees and commercial hives to die off. It's kind of an issue that you, you read about if you read about literature in the environment or agriculture uh, um, situations. In reaction to that issue, some jurisdictions have begun to allow beekeeping in residential settings. The requester has provided information from Los Angeles County, the state of California, and the city of Santa Monica, and has listed several other cities that he stated have a, that do allow beer, beekeeping. <laughs> information on the standards from the city of Santa Monica is listed on the second page of his letter. He's also got that listed later on, but the attachment is kind of hard to read, but that second page of his letter is very clear, kind of mm -hmm. states, and I did look at the Santa Monica website this afternoon, and it, it pretty much is copied verbatim from that. And you really do have to change the queen every six months? That's what it says. I, I don't understand, I don't understand the socialization of bees, but I do, I, I think I understand that what that does is it, 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 if you keep doing that, a queen doesn't die and it doesn't, they don't swarm and go look for another queen. Yeah. I think, I think that's it. National Geographic says, right? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> according to them. Um, the commission can choose to initiate a code amendment con to consider changes to the code. A, resolu a resolution to initiate the code amendment is attached as the commission decides to grant the requested initiation. Staff didn't dedicate a lot of time to research this because we usually don't until we have to find out if the planning commission or in some cases the city council really wants to go forward. And then we, then we start working on it. So there are three options available to the Planning Commission. Adopt the resolution initiating the code amendment. Request specific information to be researched by staff and brought back at a later time. Or determine that the proposed code amendment is not appropriate for the city. Um, 
Also, I got an email late this afternoon that the applicant was going to be unable to be. He was planning on being here. was unable to be here. He didn't ask for it to be continued. He just asked that I let him know how the meeting turned out. So that's just information for your consideration as well. I'll be happy to answer any questions to whatever knowledge I might be able to. Has there been any questions? Commissioner, Has there been an opportunity for Put anyone? Your, uh, can you talk in here? Yeah. Has there been any, an opportunity for anyone to look at the health aspects? I carry an EpiPen because of, even though I had been stung many times in my youth, about three years ago I stepped on a bee. And I had a reaction to that. And now I have a concern, I don't, medically they have a concern over what another bee sting would do to me. So I have to carry an EpiPen around with me and change it every year because of bees. So I would be a little concerned about whether that's a significant issue for enough of our community that we ought to be concerned about having an opportunity to bring more bees into the area. And, and I certainly understand that, that side of it. I, I haven't done a lot of research. I didn't see anything on the few websites that I went to, but clearly that's a concern. There is a segment of society that is allergic to bees and would probably not be, appreciate being introduced to a swarm of them. Any other questions, staff? Okay, Mr. Redolch, would you like to speak on this? absolutely no reason for the city to go down this path. I, I think we're opening up a can of worms or a hive of bees, whatever you want to call it, but I think we have enough things on our plate as a city, staff has enough to do with limited resources and limited manpower. I don't really think we need to add this burden. Uh, the one individual has come forward with a personal issue. Uh, I see no reason for the city to uh, initiate a code amendment and go down this long path. Uh, and frankly, I think even if it was to get past the commission, I don't, I don't even, I don't see the council going forward with this either. But uh, as far as your options are concerned, I, I think it is appropriate for this commission to determine that it is not appropriate for the city to go forward with this. I don't think it's uh, necessary, and I don't think. Uh, there's any reason to go forward with it, and as Commissioner Menifee has brought up, uh, it could open the city up, frankly, by allowing this to litigation on so many fronts. If people are injured, their health is impaired, uh, a life is lost, it really is innumerable uh, consequences that could happen by going forward with this. It could open up the city to all kinds of litigation by allowing it. And, uh, you know, you're going to have neighbors coming in. This guy's got 8,000 bees next to me. God knows what it what could it could lead to, and I don't think we need to, to go down the road. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Commissioners. I do agree with uh, Commissioner Minifel that uh, you know, as a personal experience, I do have a nephew that is allergic to these things. And, you know, he's only 14 years old, and he does have to carry one of those. Everything. And my problem is, a few years ago, we had a big swarm of those bees that ended up in our apple tree. Now, you don't know if they're the African guys, bees or whatever, that were attacking and stuff like that. So what we did, we had to stay in the house, took our dogs in the house, and luckily the next day they were gone. But this is something our city does not need. You know, they're in, out, out, they're in a certain areas for certain reasons. My problem is, if we allow one neighbor, to, one person to do it, another person to come up and do it. Another person. Now, how do you deny one if you've already caved the other one? So this is a path I don't think our city needs to go down. I would hope this uh, planning commission would say, no, this is something that we want in our city and deny it and let's just move on. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Commissioner Woods. Yes, my comment would be that I'm, I'm from the farming area <clears throat> in Infra Valley where, there's a, where bees should be and where they should stay. Uh, people dealing with uh, bees and beehives, which I'm familiar with, people who do not understand that are just really asking for a lot of problems. And uh, they're, they also are subjecting uh, other people to, uh, to bees, and bees don't... Uh, respond to people and they don't 
ask you what they should do next. Uh, a bee is going to find food. And uh, I think you're opening a door to something that you'd be very sorry for as time goes by. Too many, too many people would be thinking it would be a fun thing to have a beehive, but until they understand what bees can do, uh, I think they would, uh, it would be, they'd change their mind very quickly. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Holtz, do you have any comments? Yeah, I, I'm kind of leaning towards uh, more information. I know your staff is, is really thin. It's on? It's on now? It's on. Okay. And I know staff is really thin, but I don't think there's a time frame on this, whether it takes a year to come back or not. But I've done a little research on it, not a lot. But there is a, a significant colony, uh, what they call colony collapse disorder. Um, I, I think there are only certain places that we would agree to let them be. Uh, like, for instance, this gentleman that applied, I went up to his house. Now, behind his house is all open area. The problem I see, though, is the neighbors are so close. Now, I think we need to, if we do something like this, we'd have to have some severe restrictions and certainly get the approval of neighbors uh, if they would have a problem with it or not. But I think there are some locations in the city, and certainly if, I don't know if you need to have a license to keep bees or not, that I don't know. But I can't imagine just an amateur going in saying, gee, it'd be keen to have a bunch of bees without knowing what they're getting into. So I think if we have some severe restrictions on what it takes and where they could be, I think we ought to at least do a little further study on this and uh, come back to us with uh, some more information. And that's where I'm coming from. Uh, for instance, like on, uh, for, on Vanderhoof, where we have all the horses and wild animals down there, if there was like a one beehive down there or whatever, a bee colony, I mean, who would that affect? I don't think it would affect anybody if the neighbors didn't care. But certainly not in a really tight residential neighborhood or like this, let's say, this El Dorado complex where everybody's on top of each other. We, so we'd have to restrict it. But I think, again, we need to get more information before we can just say yes or no. And that's where I'm coming from. Good, thank you. <clears throat> well, my, my idea is that I don't believe every house in town would qualify because simply because the size of the lots. If you have too small a lot, you wouldn't qualify. So where do we go from there and make a lot size that would even qualify to keep it away from uh, the neighbors? The second thing is I don't think that many people in West Covina are really interested in it. I don't think we'd have enough to warrant the staff work that would be you know involved to get it uh, ready for us and so really right now i'm not really uh too concerned about even going ahead with it so i'm going to uh, vote no against the you know for the code amendment not that one so do we need a just a hand just a motion regular a motion yeah we don't there's no resolution to to deny okay. initiation yeah well I'll make i'll make a motion to deny the code amendment myself i'll second second by commissioner menifee all in favor of the dying? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. 3 1. All right, we'll move on to number six, which is a study, study session on the purpose of code amendments. Staff report, please. Probably should have done this one before the last one, shouldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is a, a study session just to kind of, kind of uh, help educate the, the planning commissioners on. Uh, code amendments in this case. The, the rules of the City of West Covina are contained in the City of West Covina Municipal Code. There are other laws that the City must follow outside the Municipal Code, such as the California Vehicle Code, the Brown Act, and the California Environmental Quality Act. Um, but the rules for the City, are, that the City has the right and the authority to make on their own, are all found in the, in the Municipal Code. Our Municipal Code includes 26 chapters that cover a variety of different um, topics and the ones that are most important to the Planning Commission are z subdivisions and zoning. Those are two different uh, chapters. Chapter 26 is zoning. I don't, chapter 17, Fabiola tells me, is subdivisions. Um, the Municipal Code has been in its present form since it was adopted in 1977. There was a Municipal Code before that time. It just looked a little bit different. Had it, it was quite a bit smaller, too. Um, the Code is not intended to be a static document. It's meant to change over time as changes happen in society and technology in the business environment. 
Generally, changes to the code occur gradually. Generally, as, as some of you have been on the commission for a while, I've seen that generally single topic issues that come up and we address, or the Planning Commission City Council address. The responsibilities of the Planning Commission are enumerated in the zoning chapter of the Municipal Code. The Planning Commission is responsible for reviewing any changes to the zoning chapter of the Municipal Code and making recommendations to the City Council. The City Council has the final authority to approve or deny code amendments. Amendments to the zoning chapter require a public hearing both before the Planning Commission and the City Council. And that's not true of all code amendments. That, that's one of the things unique about the zoning code is it does require a public hearing um, before both bodies. Code, a code amendment can be requested by a member of the public, an applicant for a project uh, from staff, or from the Planning Commission, or from the City Council. However the idea comes about, it can only be initiated by the Planning Commission or the City Council. And, and the code states it needs to be initiated as, as, a, as a resolution by a majority vote of the Commission or Council. And I think the idea there is that, as we just talked about, um, you don't want staff to devote time to something that nobody's interested in doing. So you and the Council being the two that are going to be making the decision on whether or not it, it, it's, it, it, it's carried through or not, you also direct us to, to uh, so that we do our work in a um, in an orderly and reasonable fashion. Requested code amendments are brought forward to the Planning Commission with a brief explanation on the subject and the reason for the request, which we just, we just did. Upon initiation, the code amendment is assigned to one of the planners in the Planning Department. And at that point, the project planner conducts research on the subject and contacts other cities to determine um, how other cities have dealt with that same issue. And usually we'll find that there's a wide variety of ways that cities have dealt with things. Once issues and options have been defined by the but, but have been defined by staff, the planning department will schedule a study session with the planning com commission to obtain feedback from the commissioners. And that, you know, most code amendments are a little bit different. There's not a, a one way it's done. It just depends on the uh, level of com um, complexity to the code amendment or the simpleness of it. Sometimes we bring one time, sometimes there's not a need to bring it back because it's so simple. It sort of, as the initiation, we get enough direction. But more often than not, we need to bring it back to a study session, sometimes two or three study sessions to go through each one of the item or each one of the issues that we're trying to address. Once the commission has provided feedback and direction, staff prepares a code amendment document and, and, and schedules a public hearing before the planning commission. The documents provided at the public hearing include a staff report and a resolution that includes the draft language to amend the code. The Planning Commission will review the draft code amendment and can vote to recommend approval, recommend denial, or continue the hearing and direct staff to modify the draft code amendment. Keep in mind that it, with, with a code amendment, the Planning Commission is always recommending something. The, the one caveat to that is if the Planning Commission initiates a code amendment and then decides later that they'd like to um, withdraw that code amendment, I'm not sure the exact terminology with that, but they can rescind. That's probably a better term. They can rescind it if they initiated it. But if the City Council initiates it, and, you know, and the Planning Commission doesn't think it's a good idea, they need to just provide that information to the Council and let the Council make the, the final decision on it. Currently, the Planning Department has three code amendments in process, multiple family zoning standards, uh, game arcades and billiards, and then one that was just initiated recently, what's going to be coming back to you with the housing element update, There's a variety of different things that are involved in that one. Staff must balance the workload of the four planners in the department in devoting time to processing code amendments and processing the other applications we have and also uh, staff time at the counter and at phones and at other um, working with other departments. So that concludes my presentation. i uh, be happy to answer any questions. Any questions, staff? Aviola has I guess. corrected herself. It's uh, subdivision is chapter 20. I know you're all taking tests. And I wrote down 17. Yeah, you wrote it there. Well, maybe you can cross it off. <laughs> all right. Any questions of staff? Anything? I guess the report was real good. <laughs> we got it all. All right. We'll go back to oral communications again. But, oh, Mr. Johnson. Oh, I should have speak. No, I would just like to say, as uh, I didn't realize before I came tonight, that explaining to Commissioner Vines of design. And I'd like to publicly say is that uh, I commend it to him. Rudy was a, was a wonderful person. And he served our city well. And I congratulate him and that he realized his health problems that he had, <coughs> that he can't fulfill the duties of a planning commissioner. And I really commend him for what he's done for that. And I want to thank him publicly. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, we moved on to the uh, planning director's report. Well, no, it's community commission uh, reports. Anybody has report? Commissioners? Commissioner, I have a, I have a comment. I received a wonderful email uh, yesterday, I believe, and tonight was given these two documents that just really please me no end because having been fortunate enough to be a part of the Arts Commission that, that we once had, uh, I know, as, as my colleague to my right knows, the hours we spent going through some wonderful, wonderful opportunities for artists to show their wares to come to the conclusion that these were the two best suited for their location. So I'm tickled to death, and I know the, the planning director would like to speak more to that, but I'm tickled to death to know that on October 1st and October 3rd, we're going to finally have an unveiling of those artworks. So thank, you. thank you. Good, thank you. Any other comments from the commissioners? All right, now we can go ahead and go to the planning director's report. Well, Gerald did a very good job of announcing that. Um, on October 1st at 4 o'clock at Cameron Park, there will be the unveiling of the artwork which is hanging around um, by Mark Hopkins. The artist is Mark Hopkins. And then on October the 3rd at 4 o'clock, there will be the unveiling of the Cortez site, which is um, Sports Buddies by Victor Isa, I believe. So, yes, so everyone's invited to, to attend that if they'd like to. And then uh, one other uh, point of information. As I think all of you are aware, the City Council has been live streaming their, their meetings on, um, on the website. And we have been preparing to do that with the Planning Commission, too. Um, and you might have noticed that we had a, a visitor, a distinguished visitor from uh, our staff uh, tonight who's helping us. Uh, we're doing a practice run tonight. And the next meeting, we intend to be live streaming the Planning Commission meeting. So hopefully um, that will go smoothly. Sometimes things don't. But, um, but that, that, that's what's in the cards for the next meeting. And then from then, then forward. Okay. One question on the, the uh, Cameron Park. It's at 4 o'clock. Isn't that park full of kids uh, from the school about the same time? We'll have to elbow them aside. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it is kind of a popular place in the after school yeah, time. Yeah, that's I'm, where they go. I'm hoping that by 4 it's died down a little bit, but. Do the best you can, right? Yes, exactly. Okay, that's fine. All right, how about city council action? City May, council. Mr. Chairman, yes. may I ask a, a clarification question about live streaming on the, on the city's website? Uh, I guess that's something that's more feasible to do than having live televised broadcast. But I'm, have you any sense of who the public is out there that's going to be watching things that are live streamed on a website? Well, that's a good question. No. Uh, um, l l um, I I'd answer that by saying planning staff wasn't involved in the research or the decision-making process on, on yeah. how th there's a cost issue, and, and if you watch or come to planning council meetings, you'll see that there's a lot of input from the public, from some public members on good, bad, otherwise, on how it's being done. Um, but I think the, the bottom line is the, the council had made a decision um, based on some economic issues to, to, uh, to do what we're doing now. Um, it was on cable, but cable, not everybody gets cable. Right. So, you know, whatever you do, there's, there's, you're not going to have 100%. Even if you had it on TV, not everybody has TV. So, um, that, I think that was part of the decision that more and more people have access to, to the internet. Plus, it's, um, correct me if I'm wrong, you can nod your head, but I think it's available all the time. You can watch it whenever you want to. Yeah, so with the internet, you can watch it live, but if you're awake at 4 o'clock in the morning and can't sleep, you can watch you guys in action. That might help. <laughs> so that, that's one. That's one positive. That's more. That's, that's a positive with the internet. That's not with um, cable. You, you you can't have cable on demand. You know you you you're, you can watch it when it's on, but but with the internet you have some options. We still have to have a staff that's going to initiate the the no. 
Just all collected by one camera, six think, cameras or something. I think maybe we can have some discussions maybe after the meeting or sometime. All right. I'm probably not prepared to answer the level of questions that you're asking, and so it's probably best for me not to speculate. But we we can probably get you answers. Yes. Thank you. Is okay. there going to be any restriction on how many times her red house can come up to the podium when we're live? <laughs> that will be up to the chairman. <laughs> 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 Okay. We passed over to city council actions. Was there anything for us on that? No, there's nothing. That, that nothing that. Right. Okay. Do we have anything else that uh, anybody like to talk about? If not, we're down to the adjournment part. Move adjournment. Move to adjourn. Commissioner Mendefee? Yeah, Commissioner Hall second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. <laughs>